Thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, we are ready to start my presentation about a style guide for designing web APIs. That's the title of this presentation. I am Rolando Carrasco, and I am from Mexico. I, I work in Mexico City with a company by the name S&P Solutions, which is a, it's a consulting firm which is focused on modern technologies, modern architectures such as API management, containers, microservices, um, artificial intelligence, and machine learning, and so on. And this presentation is about web API designing. This is the main objective of this presentation. We are, I am going to talk about the relevance of having a good set of design patterns when you are designing and, and developing web APIs, okay? That's exactly what we are going to do now. Um, I think it's, uh, it's gonna take around 20 minutes with the slides, and then the rest of the time is going to be a live demo. And this is, this is the agenda for today. I am going to do a brief introduction about the momentum of the web APIs, what is happening in the industry with web APIs, and why they are so relevant nowadays. I am going to give you some context about what is happening again in the industry with, with APIs, and then I'm going to um, start talking about how to treat an, a web API. If you are looking to publish, develop, share with the external world your, your APIs, then I am going to stress the idea on uh, how relevant it is to have design principles I am going to share with you my take on which are the design principles that I would like you to, to, to have, and probably you, you can um, be with me in terms of why I'm, I am saying those design principles are, are good for you. And finally, I am going to do a live demonstration with Oracle API, which is a, uh, an Oracle platform for documenting and designing APIs. And that's about the agenda. Um, I am going to talk about a little bit about my background. This is just a couple of minutes, and then we are going to uh, straight to, to the, the content of the presentation. And this is part of my work. I, I wrote this book, the one that is at the left of the screen, the Oracle API Management 12C, uh, which is a book that was published back in 2015. So it has four years now, but unfortunately, uh, that product that was about the, the book, or the book uh, was talking about a specific product by Oracle, it is no longer available. For some, for some reason, Oracle uh, decided to create a new platform, which I'm going to talk about in the next minutes. But the book itself um, is good in terms of, if, if you are looking to create a, an API strategy, then, then it's, it's, it's a good book in terms of that. The first three to four chapters are related with how to create an API strategy. Then, uh, in 2017, I was a technical reviewer for implementing Oracle Integration Cloud Service uh, book. This is a book about the integration platform in the cloud by Oracle. It was in 2017, and now in 2018, uh, also I was a, re a technical reviewer for the implementing Oracle API platform cloud service, which is probably the, the, the new release of the product that I mentioned in, in my book. Um, in 2015, so if you are already working with Oracle API Platform Cloud Service, this is a good book for you. If not, this is still a good book for you because we talk about how to implement an API strategy. I am also part of two Oracle advocacy programs, the Oracle Ace program and the Oracle Groundbreaker Ambassador program. Um, these are two um, community programs by Oracle. If you are very into uh, giving this type of presentations or if you are contributing constantly in your community, um, writing blogs or even writing um, books or articles, if you want to contribute with the community, this is, this is the place where you would like to be. Uh, the Oracle Ace program in specific is um, acknowledge community expert. So you can, you can get to Google and search for Oracle Ace program and you will, you will get the, the um, uh, the requirements to be part of, of that group. For the Groundbreaker Ambassador is kind of new. It has about two years now. It started in May 2017, so it's, it's two years now. But this program is by invitation. Oracle needs to invite you, and, and if you are doing those type of things about community and all that stuff, then you're definitely going to be part of this. 
So that's it. Uh, let's move on to the presentation. And this is the way that I normally start my, my presentations for the last maybe three years now. I am always stressing this idea that developers, programmers have at the reach of their hands the ability to change the way we live. And, and I, I truly believe in that. I strongly believe in that. I think we have the ability to do something that can touch a lot of people around the world and can change the way we live. And it is true. I came here to New York City yesterday. I took a flight from Mexico City to here. And I took an Uber from my house to the local Mexico City airport. And then I used the Aeromexico mobile application to make the check-in. I just printed my boarding pass. Then I get here to New York and took another Uber. I made a check-in of my hotel by the, um, the website. So I just get in and get the keys. So I pretty much um, did the entire trip without having to talk with someone. Obviously, I am not highlighting that, that we don't need to talk with someone else. And I am not trying to say that. What I'm trying to say is that with the technology, with the way that we are using technology, it is possible to make these type of things without having the need to talk with someone. Imagine 10 years ago, let's not go back so, so far. 10 years ago, probably we didn't have this ability to do these this kind of things. And if you just uh, take a minute to figure out how you are doing your normal uh, daily basis activities, they are pretty much done by your mobile device, probably, or using technology. And it is pretty much because someone has already published an API and someone is consuming that API. So the fact of having those APIs is, is not a joke. It is, it is pretty serious. And I actually think that we are living on, an, on a happy world. If we use the, the word happy, but we incorporated the API. So we are using this happy uh, world. I think we are living in this happy world. I think we are definitely living on this era that APIs have become very relevant. And um, something that I really think is that we are going into a common pitfall, which is not doing or taking the enough time to design our APIs. There are plenty of APIs outside, and we can use them. Um, actually, if, if you go to programmableweb.com, I don't know if you have gone to that website, but if you go to, to programmable web, um, I think there are more than 21,000 APIs that you can use, okay? Some of them are cheap, some of them are free, some of them you need to pay for, the, for, for using them, but it is a good amount of APIs now. If we get back to 2008 or so, probably we didn't have as much as APIs that we have now. And I, I have a question for you. Which was the first API that you used? Anyone who would like to, to contribute for, with the session? Anyone? Which one? Exactly. Uh, I was going to say the same thing as him. In my case, it was Google's API and the, the geolocation API. And, and that is true. That's probably the most used API in those days. But let's change the question. What, when was the last time that you designed an API? And how do you feel about it? If you compare it with the API that you designed maybe a couple of years ago and you compare it with an API that you are designing now, how, how does it look? How would you compare it? How do you feel about it? How do you feel when you first designed your first API? OK, just, just take a minute and think about it. I think APIs are here, there, and everywhere. I think they are pretty much everywhere where we are, we are um, whatever we are doing, either we are just doing in a, an, um, a daily basis activity or we are doing a project, probably we are going to find out that there is an API. I think there are new businesses being created because of the usage of the APIs. We, we have mobile virtual network operators already working. If you go to Google again and search for MBNOs, for example, let's do it. Let's. Let's see how, how it goes. If we go to Google and search for MBNOs in the US, we have a very strong list about mobile virtual operators, okay? which, which are operators who are working on top of a, a real uh, mobile operator. For example, in Latin America, we have Virgin Mobile, which is working on top of Telefonica Movistar. So we are using Virgin as if it was a, a 
common mobile operator, but th they are not. They are working on top of someone else. Why? Because Telefonica is opening their APIs and someone as Virgin is, is using them to make a new business. Also, if we search for fintechs, for example, um, that's, this, is, this is something interesting. Um, so the 11 biggest fintech company in America. So first of all, it is, uh, they're being built by young people. Okay, as you can see, it is just young faces. But take a look to how much they, um, how they are valuable. So uh, about $22 billion, okay, uh, fintech. Why fintechs are having a good uh, success? Because of the open banking. And what is open banking? It's nothing else that the, the banks are publishing APIs, okay? So this thing about uh, APIs is serious. It is not just that we are publishing an API and that's it. It is not that because my project is asking me to publish an API and, and why not? Now this is creating new business, this is creating new channels, so th that's the relevance of the APIs. And then if we move into the o IoT, all the devices that we have now, they are pretty much interconnected because there are APIs. If we take a look to Alexa and all those conversational UIs, the power of those conversational UIs is through the APIs. Okay, it's not just the conversation itself. It is how can I make something with that conversation. So APIs are, are pretty serious. But ultimately, what is an API? If, if I ask you, well, what, what do you think, what is an API? I am actually not going to give you a definition about an API. You can go to Google and search. There are pretty much a lot of valid definitions about what is a web API. What, I going to, what, what I'm going to do is to share with you this idea about an API is a product, okay? So just keep in mind that idea. An API, it is, it is a product. It is a product of your organization. If you are talking about web APIs, and if your intention is to publish that API to the outside world, then it is a product for, for your organization. You need to treat that web API as a product. If you don't treat it as a product, then you are probably going to the common pitfall that I just mentioned in the beginning. So an API for your, your, your organization, it is a product. But probably you can get confused for all the technical things around the API, and we can say that an API is a web service, an API on top of a microservice, a service itself, a function, but all those things are because they, are, they have or they share the same, the same interface probably. But if we take a look at them probably, we can say a uh, web API, it is exactly the same thing as a service because it is an HTTP, it is REST, it is JSON, or whatever we are using. But it is kind of common the way that we, we can identify as a, as a common interface. But you know what? They are not the same thing. Uh, not at all, they, they probably look alike, but they are different, definitely intended for different purposes. They are different things, okay? They do share the protocol, they do share the interface, but ultimately, as I already mentioned, they are intended for different purposes and for different things, okay? For example, a service. Okay, a service for our organization, it is targeted for reuse. We are trying to build a service because we want to get um, some reuse for that service and therefore we want to get some costs uh, reduced in, in our uh, operation. So we would, we would like to have services because we want to lower the cost of our development, for example, okay? But an API, it is for creating new revenue, it's for creating new businesses, okay? But if we put those two elements in the same equation, then we have something very powerful. In one hand, we are going to reduce cost throughout services, and in the other hand, we are going to create new revenue for our organization. So ultimately, what, is, what, what, what are the keys for an organization reducing cost and, and increasing the revenue? So this is, again, something very relevant. This is, this is relevant for organizations, so we need to treat them, again, as a product. As I mentioned in the beginning and in, in the introduction of, of this session, I am going to stress this idea about an API is a product, so that is why I am repeating it again and again and again. And this is why I think design principles are very important for your life cycle. If you are developing an API, please take enough time to design it, okay? Try to have a set of elements that you can follow for the, for the upcoming APIs that you are going to develop. That is why I ask you, 
how do you feel about the first API that you created? And how do you feel now? Because probably you've been increasing the way or improving the way that you are designing them. Okay, so we need this set of design principles. It is a product, so do not hesitate to have a good design. Okay, if you like a product, then you are going to continue using it. And probably if, you, if there is a new release, then you are going to buy the new release of that product. If that product is a digital product, it's probably going to be uh, updated automatically, and you will be happy to continue using it. I am going to ask you one more question. Um, how many of you have in their mobile devices the configuration of, of the applications to be automatically updated? Who has it in, in such a way? Okay, so it's, it's no more than half of the audience, so I, I guess the rest of the audience have configured it to manually update the applications, right? So it, it, is, it is not an issue to have it automatically been updated or manually been updated. I can have Uber in my iPhone with, with no um, update, and I can have a friend with the latest release of Uber, and we both have the same service, right? Probably I can, I can have or I have a different type of functionality because it is in a previous release, but I can st still use it. Why? Because the product is, is constantly being improved. That is why it has new releases, but at the same time, it has a type of retro compatibility, right? And, and some of the reasons why it, it can have this type of retro compatibility is because of the APIs, okay? So we can continue using the product even if there is a new release. So we better have this type of idea for our web APIs. And I also think that good APIs are like love at first sight. So if you fell in love and you probably get along with that person because you didn't take too much time to understand him or understand her. Because the first time you have a date with her or with him, it was, it was pretty easy. You didn't have too many obstacles between, or no, in between. And you have a, now you have a good relationship because it was, it was easy to understand it. So APIs are the same thing. If you are getting in touch with an API and you are not having any issue to understand it, to use it, and to implement it, then probably that is a well-designed API. You don't need a manual to use it, okay? Now let's compare it with, with a Campbell soup. I, I can bet you that probably you have tried at least once a Campbell soup. Probably is not your favorite. It, it is actually not a, a, a favorite soup of, on my own. <laughs> but I have definitely tried it before in my life. And you know what? It was pretty easy. It was pretty straightforward. I just opened the can and just, and just prepared it. I didn't have to call the call center to explain me how to use the, the Campbell soup. And I can bet you that no one in this world has called the call center of Campbell soup to understand how to use a Campbell soup. And in the other hand, everything which is related with the soup, it is in the, in the package itself. So if I, if I actually have a doubt on how to use it, I can read in the box how, and follow this, the instructions to prepare the soup. If I actually want to know what is behind the scenes, I can get the ingredients and how it is, um, uh, what are the elements that are part of the soup. So I, I have everything in the box. And it is ready to use. I just go to the supermarket, buy it, and get home and prepare it. It is ready to use, okay? I would like to have that in my APIs, but on the other hand, I don't like to have ready or, or, or um, easy to prepare APIs. I don't want you to do right click on your code and create your API. I don't want that because if you do that, then you are not taking time for your design phase for your API. So there is that contrast uh, in, in terms of um, ready to use, but that doesn't mean that it is easy to develop or easy to design. On one hand, we have ready to use products, but probably it took a lot of time to design them. Why not? Okay. So um, that is why we need a style guide. So if if, if you start to doing to do um, APIs, and you have developed your first API, you're probably going to continue for the upcoming months and years and doing and constantly doing and developing APIs. So you better have a style guide for, for, the, for those APIs. You want, to have them, uh, you, you want to have a uniformity throughout your APIs, okay? You want a tool to validate that you are following your design principles, right? 
So you better have a style guide. For example, this is GitLab API style guide. If you go to Google and, and look for this, then, then you, will, you will hit this document. And this document is about what is the GitLab API, what is the context of this API, you will learn how to use it. And for their programmers, there is, it is a style guide for them to follow the principles of GitLab. Or this is Google's, which is, it, it caught my attention because it is kind of outdated. Probably they, they moved the documentation somewhere, somewhere else, or I don't know. But they do have an API style guide. So we are about to move into the demo. I am just going to list my take on which are good design principles for your web APIs. This, this is, these are eight design principles for your APIs and one suggestion. So the list, it, it goes like this. First of all, we would like to have an API um, very well discoverable. You need to include some elements for your API so it can be discovered throughout the internet or throughout your documentation, if it is an intranet or if it is in the internet. You better have documentation for the, those consumers who are looking for you so they can discover you and then understand what are you looking to solve with your API. Then adaptability, okay? Just as the Campbell soup in the beginning, probably it was a metal package. Now it is, it is not metal. It has changed to a different package. It is the same thing. Probably now we are using REST APIs with JSON, but in the, in, in the upcoming months, maybe for some reason, for some, te some technical reason, we are going to use GraphQL or whatever. Or maybe we are going to move to HTTP.0, uh, uh, to, to sorry. So whatever you are going to move or the technology is going to move us, then you, you better have adaptability for your APIs. The third design principle is abstraction. In contracts of, of, the, of the Campbell soup, I am not going to reveal how or what is behind the scenes, what is my backend. Who cares? If I am using Microsoft, Oracle, if I'm using a service bus, if I have a pool of microservices, if I have functions, if I am using a serverless platform, whatever, I am just publishing an API. I am not going to reveal you what is behind the scenes. There is, there is no need to, to do that. Uh, versioning, <clears throat> I better have a, a good versioning strategy because uh, as I already mentioned, and you raised your hands a couple of minutes ago, there is people who is not uh, automatically updating the applications, but the applications are still valid and they can use it, right? And you know why is happening that? Because that, is a, that application is connected to a set of APIs. And those APIs are, are versions, so that is why you can have that type of retro compatibility. A standardized API contract, because I want to have a, a standard contract for my APIs. If we take the ex example of the, of the REST APIs, we have a triangle for that contract. We have resources, we have methods or verbs, and then we have a content media or content type. And that's my contract. I just want to know what is the resource, what can I do with that resource, and what is the, the payload that I can send to it, and what is the payload that I am receiving. So it is, a, it is a common API contract. Autonomy. I don't know who is going to be using my API, because I am publishing to the external world, so it better have a good autonomy. It should be as, as much as autonomous as I can, right? Because I don't know how much um, traffic is going to receive, so it should be uh, it, should, it should have a lot of autonomy. Longevity, because I don't know what is happening in the future, but I, but I do know something that I would like you to continue using my API. So you better prepare it for, for the years, for the years to come. And finally, naming convention for resources, for the codes, for parameters, for exceptions. So you better have a constant um, naming conventions for, you, for all your APIs. And the suggestion is forgiveness. Just as I already mentioned, APIs are, are like love at first sight. And when you fall in love at first sight, then you, you get some forgiveness from your couple. If you do something wrong, then probably she or, or he is going to forgive you. If you don't use properly the API, I want to forgive the consumers. If the consumers are not sending the right information to my API, I want to be some kind of, uh, I want to forgive those consumers. I, I don't care if you don't send me the right information. I am actually going to respond to you. So I don't want my consumers to get frustrated every time that they use it. So I want to forgive them. So that is, that is also a, a suggestion. And finally, try to learn to design for developers and for non-developers. Okay? So 
uh, we, are, we are living in this digital transformation era, so it's not just about developers, it's about marketing people, business people, who is trying to do different things. And one way, and one way to do it is through API, so you better design for developers and for non-developers, okay? All right, so that's it. We have uh, 20 more minutes in, my, in this presentation, and we're going to do the demo. Uh, who has used Oracle API? No one? Who has been using Swagger? Open API, okay. API Blueprint? No? Rammel? Okay, but uh, pretty much everybody raised their hands with Swagger. So we are going to use Oracle API. I strongly suggest you to test the tool. It has a free option, so you can just get to apiary.io and create a new account and you will be ready to, to go. And what's next? Let's, let's demonstrate what I just told you about having a good design principles using the tool. So I am going to use the tool for validate my API. That's, that's the reason why I'm, I'm doing this demo. I am, again, I am going to use the tool to validate that I am following design principles for my API. So I'm going to show you I'm going to show you that, okay? All right, so this is uh, apiary.io, okay? This is an Oracle product. It is, um, you can have a free user, if you will, with some limit, uh, limited um, capabilities, but you can still use it. And this is the, um, the tool. So you have, uh, I don't know if it's better to use that. Is it, is it better now? Okay. All right. So at the, at the left side of the screen, we have the API blueprint. I'm going to show you what is that. And at the right, right side of the screen, we have the documentation of my API. Let me just create a, a, an API from scratch so you can get the feeling of, of how, how it goes. So let's create this as a Rolando Carrasco, New York. Okay. And you have two options. You have API Blueprint, as I mentioned, and Swagger, okay? I am going to use API Blueprint. You are, um, you are okay with Swagger, Swagger because you raised your hand, so I'm going to show you the alternative of API Blueprint. So let's create on, on the, uh, let's click on the button of Create API. And we have a um, template for my API. So I, I'm going to describe it at the left side of the window. It is similar to YAML, <clears throat> it's similar to Markdown, so it is like a mix of YAML and Markdown, the way that you're going to describe your APIs. It's about creating um, a set of collection, collections. Collections are uh, resources that you can apply verbs for, uh, for taking actions on top of them. And then you are going to define how this specific resource is going to respond or receive information from, from the consumer. So in this case, let's imagine that we are going to build a survey application, a mobile survey application, and we are in charge to create the API for that survey application. Okay, so we create a resource by the name questions, and we have a, um, a resource, again, questions, and we are going to use get as a verb for those questions. So every time we, we do a get with with slash questions, we are going to get this, okay? So this is, this is the response. We are modeling our API, we are designing it. Or if we do a post to create a new question, we are going to send this information to my API to create a new question, and we are going to get this answer from our, our API. So this is, this is the response, and this is a link to the newly created question. Okay, so it's pretty much uh, straightforward in terms of how to define resources, verbs on, on top of those resources, and the request and the response for those resources. Again, every time that we do something at the left side of the screen, for example, this is a demo, this is going to update the right side of the window, okay? If we want to test th this API, we can do it. We have not written one line of code, but we can still use it because it's, it has created for us a mock server. So if we click on list all questions and we copy this URL, this is responding, okay? But someone tell us, no, don't, don't include Ruby as, a, as an option, include Go. It is much more popular, so let's save it. Consume it, it's been refreshed. 
or now you know what? Ruby was okay. So, all right. So we are not developing anything. We are just using the mock server for this regard. So we can uh, collaborate with the consumer, and we are not going to move forward until the consumer is okay with this definition. And then the developer can just go ahead and, and create whatever behind the scenes, the back end or whatever. But we already have the definition. So that's the idea of API, that you can document your API, that you can design your API, and you can get a mock for your resources. So no code uh, so far, but we already have something to share with our consumers. So that's, that's pretty good because normally it is about, hey, I am going to take like two, three days to develop, and once I just finish, I'm going to share with you the resources. No, this is the other way around. This is okay, let's just get together, design it together. We are happy together with this API and then just going to share with you the mock server so you can start creating whatever you're going to do with this API. And in, in my case, I am going to continue developing the API, okay? Okay, this is just the introduction of, of API. This is, this is very, it was a very small demonstration, but you get the idea on what you can do with API. Now let's move to the demo in a specific for the design principle. So we have this API. Let's imagine that we are creating um, e-commerce platform. For example, uh, Shopify, okay? And imagine that Shopify is, is moving uh, forward in terms of having new customers, but not using uh, or creating their, their, their uh, e-commerce website on top of their platform, but they are publishing a new API. So consumers can use that API to create their own e-commerce platform. So, and, and we are in charge of designing that API, okay? So we are going to design an API to receive payments, for example. So we have a, a collection of, of payments. We can uh, uh, do a post for, with that resource to create a payment, and we will get an answer with a response 200. And then we are designing an order resource we can create an order with that post verb to create a new order, and we will get a reply with the order ID and with the link to that order. We can get um, the, the, uh, detail, the details of an order. If we do a slash order a slash ID, and we get all the details of this order, then we can uh, do fulfillment of this order and so on. We can, we can create whatever we, we think is, is, is um, is good for, for this e-commerce platform. Finally, we have a resource for sending notifications, okay? For example, this is going to send an email, right? Okay? So, what do you think about this? We are not using plurals, right? And normally, we would like to use plurals. It would be better to use payments. What do you think about the response code of 200 against a post? We are creating a resource, probably we would like to use 201 for resource created. And what do you think about versioning? I don't see anything related with versioning right here, right? So let's just uh, focus on those three things. Let's imagine that we are progressing in our style guide and we have three definitions. You need to have resources in plural, payments, order, orders, for example, shipments, okay? You need to have proper mix of resources, verbs, and HTTP codes. And third, you need to have a way to versioning your resources. Okay, let's just, let's, let's just take in mind or keep in mind that, okay? Maybe um, it is already written in a style guide and we want to validate that our API is fulfilling those requirements. So now I am going to copy this. I am going to move to another section of API where I can validate and I can apply rules and functions to my APIs to validate if they are well designed. So I am going to click here in Playground. And now the screen is divided in three sections. Okay, this section at the left side of the window is where I am going to place my API blueprint. This section in the middle is a, a set of rules that I want to apply to my API blueprint. And in the right side of the screen, I have a set of functions which are going to run against these rules and are going to validate whatever I would like to validate in my API blueprint. For example, I want to validate is if those resources are in plural, if they are versioned, and if they, there is a good mix between resources and uh, 
uh, verbs and HTTP codes, okay? So let me open these rules and functions in, in, um, in this notepad so you, you, can, you can take a look to those two files. This is the rules. This is a JSON normal file where I can enable or disable the rules that I would like to apply. And then these rules, for example, validate uh, pretty printed JSON, it is defined in this JavaScript file, which is actually going to execute code to validate, for example, if the resource is plural, if it is version, and if it is a good mix with resources and verbs, okay? So if you want to extend these functions, if you want to apply the specific rules for your API, then you are, you are free to do it. That's the power of, 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 this, of this tool. So let's copy this, which are my, my rules, my specific rules. So I'm going to replace this. Then I am going to copy the functions, okay? All right, and finally, let me get back to API to copy my blueprint, and then I'm, I am going to apply those those rules, okay? So I copy and then I paste it here and take a, take a look to what is going to happen. So it's validating the proper action status codes, okay? So it seems I am not having a good relationship with my status codes and my verbs. I am also validating that the resources are not in plural because I have payment, I have order instead of payments, instead of orders. And in the other hand, there is, n I am not versioning my resources. So imagine that you are validating someone else's API. You can do it with, with your own rules, with your, with your own functions. Now I am going to open um, a new definition of this very same API, where, I, where now I am using plurals, such as in payments. I am versioning my resource, and now I am using the right HTTP code. I am using 201 for a post or for a resource or created resource. So now I am going to change the API blueprint and now this should be ready to go, done without any failures, all right? So this is done using the web UI, okay? I am working with my API blueprint, I share it with someone else, that someone else has access to this and is validating manually my API. But what about if you have a CI, CD strategy and you want to automate this? You just want to put your API blueprint in GitHub, for example, or in any Git repository, and you have a Jenkins job, which is uh, pulling that uh, Git repository, and you want to trigger this action. So you want to validate the design principles for your API. You can do that. Uh, there is a CLI for API. Okay, I have it here in my, in my laptop. And I, I, can, I can do the same thing, but using the CLI. So now, now let's, let's see how it goes. First, I need to, um, let me just create a temp folder right here. Okay. Let me just copy my functions and rules. All right. And let's move here. All right. So let's see. I am going to fetch my my API my API first. So I am going to do this. I just need the name of my API, which is this name right here, the Marketplace API New York. So I'm going to ask for Marketplace API New. York, and I am going to save it here, market New York dot API blueprint, okay? So now it's going to fetch, okay, the API, now I have it here, all right? And now I am going to apply the style guide for, for that API. So let's do this, it is, API style guide minus minus add. Now I need this. Now minus um, functions and the functions files that I have minus minus rules and the rules files. Okay. So 
So now I'm, I am applying the same thing. Oh, something went wrong. Yep, and something is wrong right here. Let's mark it. Oh, minus minus functions equals functions minus minus rules equals equals rules. This is going to do exactly the same thing, but in the CLI, all right? So I can actually aut automate this. If I have a CI CD strategy, I can automate this. If I want to, to get the full report, then I just need to do a full report option, and I am going to get the full report of how it passed all the, all the definitions, all right? So as you can see, you can, um, automate this task, you can define your own rules, your own functions, you can apply those rules, those functions into your API blueprint, and you can move forward developing your API once it is validated, once you are okay that your design is valid, okay? And if uh, you want to test those APIs, you can also do it. There is this option about testing, and actually it is a tutorial for that. You just need to install Dread, with NPM and just do this, just copy this thing right here, okay? You just copy, paste it. The API is market ny.api blueprint, okay? I want to use the Rails server. The endpoint is not this one, I want to use the mock for that regard, I am going to test the, the API but hitting the mock server that I just showed you. So I am just going to copy and paste this. Okay. I'm going to use Node.js and yes again. And then I'm just going to type red. There is going to be an error and I'm going to fix it just right away. I still have three minutes. There is an error in my API blueprint because it has these characters, okay. So I am going to remove those characters. I am going to use this Unix um, command prompt for that regard. So let me just move to New York and then TMP. And then I'm going to do a set, okay. Um, it's like this. And, all right. And I should be ready to go. I just remove those, those characters. And now it's going to test my API. So I am not only validating the, the design of my API, but I am actually testing it now. So I am validating that whatever I design, when this is implemented, it is, um, it is having the same design that I, that I created in the beginning, okay? And this is the report of, of my test. So I can automate the whole process. I can automi automate the validation of my design and then automate the testing for my API. So I can be sure that everything is in place. Yes? Yeah. So the question is what is kind of the life cycle of this? Uh, in this session, it was pretty fast because of, of the time that we have. But what I can suggest you is the following. You design your API. You have someone using this, okay? You are using this. But this can, can get connected to GitHub. So every time you design it, you just put it in GitHub, all right? Someone has already configured a job in Jenkins, which is validating this through the CLI that I just showed you. And this is not going to pass. To the, to the next person of the team who is going to develop this until the design is, is okay. Now it is in the hands of the developer who is going to receive the API blueprint. So he is going to receive all the resources that we want to create. What are the payloads, the exceptions, the codes, the verbs, and he's going to implement it. How? I, I don't know, maybe it is a set of microservices, maybe it's through a service bus, maybe it is basically code or whatever, Java code or whatever. Once he has finalized it, he's going to push it back to GitHub, but now with the code. And this is going to trigger another job in your Jenkins server or whatever you are using. And that job is going to do this. 
is going to validate uh, that the developer has created properly or developed properly your API. And now you are sure that the design has been followed, that he's not messing around, and he is respecting whatever you designed in the beginning. That would be one way to, to automate the whole process. Correct, you are validating. That is why I included the API blueprint for the, for the testing purposes, because I am validating the payloads that I designed in the blueprint against whatever the developer has, has incorporated. So I think we are done. Um, we, are, we are done with, with the presentation. If you have any questions, I am, I am open for those. I, I really hope you, you enjoy the session, you like it, and you can give it a try for Oracle API. Uh, if you want to contact me, uh, if you like the session, you can do it here. There is my Twitter handler, my, uh, my email, or my LinkedIn, or my blog, okay? So if there is something that I can help you with about APIs, just, just let me know, I, 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 I will be happy to do it. Okay, so thank you, thank you again. I am Rolando Carrasco, I am from Mexico, and, and thank you for, for participating in the session, thank you.